you, you show charts with Philippines, Indonesia, and Southeast Asia with, with booming uh, e-commerce markets. And the big opportunity for us is that right now, e-commerce is only representing about 2% of the overall retail market, which is nothing compared to an Indonesia or Philippines at maybe 20% or 20% plus, right? So the big opportunity for us is to go from 2% to 20%. Right, that's that's really what we're here to talk about and how we're going to drive that. Because yeah, the economies are stabilizing, demand is coming back. Demand has always been there, but uh, even you know, in a stagnant, stagnant retail market, there's a huge e-commerce opportunity of going from the two to the twenty percent, and that's really what this e-commerce summit is about. We're going to start talking to the marketplace participants about how we're going to drive that acceleration from two percent to twenty percent. <clears throat> that's a huge opportunity, and you know the growth that we're seeing today, uh, you know, it's it, it's less, I would say because of a booming consumer market with high demand for brand high quality products, but it's much more value driven uh, about providing good value for money across the categories, but also across all the different category uh, or the, the different uh, customer segments. Mm. And that's really where you know our strategy is, is all about driving that growth from two to 20% because the opportunity is, is, is huge. Isn't the fastest way to do it though, ensuring, and this is what they're, they're doing in India right now, Reliance, but ensuring that you have cheap phones that have access to 4G, 5G, that can then be used by people that don't necessarily have you know, internet access in their house in order to really drive that e-commerce growth. Isn't that the easiest way to do it? Perhaps subsidization. Yeah, so I would say, if you'd asked me three, four years ago, I would have probably answered along those lines, that it's about infrastructure, it's about connectivity, but we have now more than 40% uh, internet connectivity, and as I said, we have about half a billion people uh, in our country, so that means that we have well above 100 million active uh, active consumers on, on the internet, and our real target market is maybe 100 million people. That's a lot of, that's a lot of people. Uh, logistics used to be a problem, right, but we've also built now the logistics infrastructure so we can deliver pretty fast and pretty reliably across all of our markets. So right. the main thing that we're focused on now is really driving down the cost, right? That's it. We right. need to be able to make better value for, for, for money. And that's both in terms of the product, delivering the product yeah. at the best possible price but also the price of logistics, so we can do it cheap or even free. Uh, that, that's really the challenge. It's not so much whether the infrastructure sure. exists or not that, that we've covered. BRK, very quickly, you got acquired, uh, the Rouse Group got acquired uh, the e-commerce uh, part uh, by Alibaba Group in 2018. What's the mandate uh, they've given you? I mean, what are the targets uh, and how cooperative as an owner have Alibaba been? Um, <clears throat> so first of all, Alibaba has been a a fantastic partner uh, all the way through in our you know in the last five years and we focus primarily on three things uh, number one is tech right to make sure that we take all the best tech solutions within the Alibaba ecosystem and push them into the RAS number two is supply chain to make sure, sure. we get the product uh, to the customer uh, as you know as, as economically uh, and operationally efficient as possible and number three is the is the knowledge sharing right that you know before sure. we were we were figuring out things on our own, but now we have access to uh, to, to not just Alibaba itself, but it's, it's all of the businesses like Lazada, like Trendy Oil in Turkey, like AliExpress, yeah. mm -hmm. about how to build this global supply chain. Uh, 